Hey everybody, Derek Christensen here, owner of Legion Law, a premier estate planning and probate firm in Dallas, Texas. Today I wanted to talk to you about estate planning if you have minor children. But before I dive into that, let me know let me tell you how to reach out to me. You can find me in my email, Derek D-E-R-E-K at LegionLawPLLC.com, or you can find me on my website, www.legionlawplc.com. So with that, let's dive right in and talk about those little kids. <laughs> So estate planning in uh, the context of having minor children really boils down to two important factors. The first is to make sure that you yourself as the parent are protected because obviously you're the one who takes care of those kids and if anything happens to you, then it affects the children as well. So I would strongly recommend that you have at least a will in place. If not a will, also have a trust. Um, those are great ways to make sure that your children will be covered. Now, I'll talk about this in a different video about transferring assets to children, but at the end of the day, you still wanna make sure that it's very clear if your children are receiving something, even if they're minors. And if they are receiving minors, you may wanna specify who is to receive those assets, who is gonna be managing them for the kids, because in Texas, if you receive assets from, I believe, under 18, maybe under 21, you are supposed to have someone manage those assets for the children. So either way, a will or a trust, that takes care of the assets, but I would argue the more important part is to make sure you have medical power of attorney in place, financial power of attorney in place, uh, advanced healthcare directive, do not resuscitate form, um, and the HIPAA release uh, form to make sure that uh, people can make financial and medical decisions on your behalf to make sure your estate is still protected to make sure the children still have something uh, and they still have their parents. So anyways, have the, the standard, pretty normal estate plan, at least, let alone anything additional. But when it comes to the children specifically, you'll want to make sure that there's something called a guardianship designation created for them. And a guardianship designation is really a just a separate document, um, similar to any of these other documents I just mentioned, but this separate document is going to specify two things, well, three things, really who can and cannot serve as guardian over your children if you were you and your spouse were to pass away. Um, so that's the first thing, who's going to be the guardian over the kids? The second thing is, are they going to be uh, the guardian of the estate and then also the guardian of the person when it comes to the children? Now the guardian of the estate is going to specify, um, well, the guardian of the estate is going to be the person who is allowed to make financial decisions on behalf of the children. So this is going to be managing those assets I mentioned previously. This is going to be uh, the ability to buy new housing and cars and you know all that stuff to make to make sure they take care of the physical well-being of the or the I guess the physical well-being of the children because the other side is the guardianship of the person, which is the medical part. This is going to be who the doctors are, where do they go to school, um, who babysits them, stuff like that. All the intangible things where um, a, a major decision needs to be made on behalf of the child. Now often people want their guardian, remember the, the first point, the, the guardian, they want them to do both. They have to be the guardian of the estate and the guardian of the person. However, you wanna make sure that that person is uh, responsible with financial decisions and understands family dynamics for medical and intangible decisions. So if you find somebody who's like that, great. And if you don't, you can split those up and you can have one person do one role and another person do another role. Um, guardianship designations are extremely important because in Texas, if you do not have one in place, the judge uh, will decide who gets to be your guardian over your children. Now, I personally know a lot of people in my family, I love them all, but some of them I would be more comfortable having my children than others, <laughs> uh, just to say that nicely. <laughs> so at the end of the day, you really do wanna make sure that your wishes are down in writing, and you wanna specify what rights that person has as they are the guardian over your child. Again, this is a one or two page document, it's completely separate from everything else. I offer it for everybody who has minor children that I work with. Um, you tend to not need guardianships as an adult because if you have financial or if you have powers of attorney and all those other documents I mentioned, that's effectively a guardianship. So, either way, um, you have to understand that you and your other partner, who you guys together made the child uh, or adopted the child, 
if that is the case, you are the only people in the world who can make those medical and financial decisions on behalf of that child. So that guardianship designation states, if we are no longer able to, these people will now have that authority. So with that, if you guys have any questions on taking care of children, making sure that your estate plan is good to go, uh, to take care of your child, make sure that all is well for them financially and medically, feel free to talk to me. Uh, you can email me directly, Derek, D-E-R-E-K, at legionlawpllc.com. Or you can find me on my website where you can go to our Contact Us page and schedule a free consultation over the phone directly onto my calendar at www.legionlawpllc.com. So with that, thank you so much for watching and have a great day.